be able to use it for future reference. All right. Good evening, everyone. So glad that you've come out tonight to help us kick off our first meeting for the fall 2023 term. Uh, this is the RTP Nesby Junior Chapter. If this is your first time coming, can you just share that in the chat and uh, just let us know how you found out about our meeting tonight. And um, we do have a couple of advisors that are helping me. So uh, John, I did make you a co-host in case some other people join um, and want to uh, get into the meeting after we start into the waiting room. So if you can. Yeah, I saw that. All right. Thank yep. you so much. Take a look at that. Awesome. And everyone, my name is Dr. Tony Arna McFarland, and I'm going to get us kicked off uh, just kind of giving everybody some house rules. We have asked that people register for the meeting because we want to make sure that we have a secure group. Here we have had some trouble in the past, so unfortunately we, we do have to have a little bit more security. And thank you for your patience and um, allowing us a few extra minutes to get started. And we are focusing on two things tonight. Suicide Prevention Month is uh, September, and it's also the start of Hispanic Heritage Month. And we will have a um, uh, discussion on both of these items. All right, first up, I'm gonna ask Jonathan if he would like to just kind of review the agenda for us. And Jonathan is our incoming president. Uh, can you hear me, Dr. Tony? Yes, I can. Okay, I'm gonna cut my camera on so you can see me. Awesome. Okay, hello, my name is Jonathan. I'm gonna be the Nesby Junior President. Uh, for our agenda, the for the, uh, Cool. Oh, about so about Nesby Jr. Uh, Dr. Tony, she's our lead for it. Um, what we're going to be going over today in this meeting is the uh, Hispanic Heritage Month uh, for Hispanic uh, Brilliance and STEM. Lauren's going to be going over that. Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot Monty. So Monty will be going over Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, we'll also be going uh, having wellness break. And then the NAMI, which is a suicide prevention, <clears throat> sorry, suicide prevention and awareness month. And then our main announcements for this meeting is our supporting supporting a mission by Dr. Tony, uh, the progress slash activities by uh, Kirtan. Is that how you say your name? Mm -hmm. And then uh, for membership, Daniel, and then programs by Alicia. All right. And actually, Daniel just informed me that he's not going to be able to come. So I've asked Kirtan. If uh, you can help us with that one, since you helped us create the slides. All right. Just as we noted, put something in the chat. Let us know how you found out about us tonight and who invited you. We will talk about our programs, our activities, how to join. It's always free to attend our meetings. Sometimes there are activities that we are participating in that do have a cost. And um, most, of the, most of the things that we are doing are open to the public. And most of our activities are virtual because we do have members who are located in other cities and other states. And Sage is going to do our mission. Uh, to, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. To increase the number of culturally responsible black engineers who excel academically to see professionally and positively impact the community. Thank you, Sage. And that is the NSBE mission. We don't discriminate, we appreciate and we celebrate. So if that mission resonates with you, all ethnicities are welcome to um, join in on our STEM activities to benefit and to help us expand so that underrepresented populations are able to also have equity and access to STEM. Thank you so much. All right, Lauren Lascano. Lauren, are you ready to um, give us a 
review of Hispanic Heritage Month? Yes, I sure am. All right, I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, Lauren is actually an alum. So Lauren, just introduce yourself. You have mm -hmm. your college uh, gear back there. Just tell us a little <laughs> yes. bit about yourself and uh, what you're up to before you go into your presentation. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I am I am an ex um Nesby junior member um of the RTP chapter. I used to be the vice president um in my senior year. And um I just think this is a great organization to just help motivate um kids to be involved in STEM. And like even like there's so much work to be done, like and especially you realize it like in um college like I haven't seen like like people are just now starting to like make a like Latinos in tech club here at the school and like awesome. just starting it's just starting to get ramped up um just like motivate other people to like get involved in STEM so yeah I I think any opportunity to get people involved in STEM is great and that's why I want to be involved in Nesby um when I was in high school and that's why I'm presenting to you guys again today. <laughs> now, where are you in school and what are you studying? Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> I'm in, um, I'm at UNC Chapel Hill studying uh, computer science and statistics. And yeah, I hope to be a software engineer one day. You yes. will be. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Take it away. Okay. I also want to start this out by saying, like, um, I know some of these like Hispanic inventors and scientists are like it's not recent there are not a lot of recent like huge achievements that like Hispanic inventors and scientists have made but that is not to discourage anyone we should take this as like something to motivate us to um become these people that create new things and invent new things so yeah, so I'll just talk about a couple um, uh, scientists. So Ellen Ochoa, she was an, or she is <laughs> an American engineer and former astronaut of Mexican descent. And she was the 11th director of the Johnson Space Center. And this was its first Hispanic director, director and second female director. And she joined NASA in 1988 as a research engineer and was selected to be an astronaut eventually. And here we have Franklin Ramon Chang Diaz, and he is a mechanical engineer, a physicist, and former astronaut as well. And he was born in Costa Rica in the 1950s, and he is the first Hispanic astronaut. Also, we have Guillermo Gonzalez Camarena, and he was an electrical engineer, and he's well known for his invention of a color wheel, color television, and he was granted a U.S. patent for it. So here we have Jacinto Convit, and he was a Venezuelan scientist, and he is known to be the creator of a vaccine for leprosy. And he did this by combining a known ter tuberculosis treatment with an armadillo bacterium in 1987. We also have Luis Alvarez, who was a Mexican-American scientist who was involved with many engineering and research projects, and he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1968 for the development of the hydrogen bubble chamber. And this invention enabled the discovery of resonance states in particle physics. Here we have Cesar Milstein, and he was an Argentine biochemist that did antibody research, and he's most known for producing the first monoclonal antibodies in 1975. And as a result, he became one of the fathers of modern medicine. Next is Alejandro Zaffaroni, and he was an innovator in biotechnology and drug delivery systems from Uruguay. And he founded several biotechnology and pharmaceutical companies, <laughs> sorry, including AZLA. And he played a significant role in the development of the birth control pill, the nicotine patch, the DNA chip, and 
corticosteroids. <laughs> And last, we have Severo Ochoa, and he was a Spanish phys physician and biochemist. And in 1932, he went to the National Institute for Medical Research in London, where he worked with Dr. H.W. Dudley on his first problem in enzy enzymology. Yep. <laughs> and um, he won the Nobel Prize in 1959 for discovering an enzyme that can synthesize RNA. And that's all I have. Um, but yeah, again, like this is just more motivation to become like these engineers, scientists, and be able to make achievements that other people can look back on and um, continue to motivate um, people to pursue STEM. Excellent. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Lauren? She actually um, pulled this together for us a few years ago and it was so good that we have saved it it is public information now we have made it um, available via our google public drive and we'll drop that link in the chat if anybody wants to go back and read it in detail does anybody have any questions for lauren on this exercise awesome so lauren uh if you're sticking thank, around thank you okay Thank you, Jonathan, as well. Lauren, if you're sticking around for a few, um, if you have any questions, you can just drop those in the, ch in the chat. And uh, let's give her some love in the chat and a round of applause for uh, keeping us up to date. Um, I learned a lot when she first did this exercise, and we do have some other things that we're going to discuss shortly um, in regards to Hispanic Heritage Month. Thank you so much, Lauren. And we're looking forward to having your sister, Brianna, as a part of the chapter, too. Thank you uh, for having me. <laughs> Anytime. Yeah. All right. So next, Imani, are you ready to talk about SHIP? Let me bring that into the... Yes. Can you see me? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry if there's any background noise, but... Okay. So... Hi, my name is Imani. I am a junior at Odyssey Charter School in Delaware, and I am currently the vice president of the, um, or the rising vice president of the um, NSB Junior chapter. Um, and today I'm want, I want to share with you um, something called SHIP, the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. Um, and just like us, they have a mission to bridge a gap where there was um where diversity wasn't as prevalent as it was in our nation they wanted to basically their um mission was to reflect the diversity of our nation in the field of stem so first i'm going to begin with um some background information so um a man named rodrigo garcia was at the time working as a civil engineer in los angeles california around 1973 and in his field he saw wherever he looked he was like he basically illustrated as a brown face in a like sea of white faces basically and he knew there was something off about that he was someone who only saw himself he didn't see people who looked like him in his field he didn't see um people looking like him in the field of stem and especially civil engineering where he worked in los angeles so in 1973, he had the idea to gather um, a few other Hispanic engineers um, who were full of passion and drive, who wanted to also, they had a passion to bridge the gap and basically make more of an interest for um, STEM in his community. So at first he had meetings in his garage where he would talk about struggles that he faced in his field and other people who were passionate about the same thing would share as well, um, and they wanted to make real change. They wanted to be proactive. So the group took action, and at first they connected with their community and used political means to get their message out. And eventually they upgraded from the original headquarters, which was his, um, Rodrigo Garcia's garage, to um, a place they named National Headquarters. Um, and then making in 1974, um, they officially named the ship, the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, 
And now um, it's modern day it has grown to around 13,000 members um, and they orchestrate 280 plus college chapters around the nation. And they're coming up on around 50 years of hard work. So some more things about SHIP is that um, they pride themselves in not only fostering great engineers, um, but they also wanna raise amazing leaders, especially focusing on the future generations. So they host national leadership conferences Around the, around the country, first it started in the Los Angeles, California area, but now they branch out to other regions um, to be able to create workshops and just, just educational opportunities for um, younger people to be able to have more exposure to STEM and realize that if they have an interest in STEM, they aren't alone and they aren't the only person that looks like them in that field and not to be discouraged. Um, and you see a lot of similarities between Nesby and SHIP, actually. So, and um, they also, so that's on the end of um, I lessons, but also for adults, they provide career support um, for their members. So this includes um, connecting job seekers to employers. Um, so really raising up the idea that they should, they really act on and are proactive on their mission. They don't just advocate for more inclusion, more diversity in the STEM field. They actually are proactive in connecting people who want jobs and who have the education in STEM um, and who have those degrees to employers to bridge that gap of diversity. And those things weren't as recent, but in 2020, which is more recent in the midst of COVID, they actually raised around $800,000 $800, to continue their efforts and um, being able to help people in not only in their community, but also nationwide to be able to provide um, career support as well as support for students in their um, in their um, in ship. Um, and yeah, they've just been implementing certain things like they worked with um, a couple years ago, not a couple years ago, but around 19, 1998, I believe they um, wanted to make sure there was bridge the gap with technology in the schools. They wanted to make sure there was a computer for every student in every school. So they went into schools and they shared their, technolo their technological knowledge with students um, for far out rural districts that maybe don't have that knowledge or don't have teachers to be able to teach um, the information to students. So they were able to really impart their knowledge on younger kids to be able to rise the new generation of um, STEM careers. So, yeah. I don't think I was showing anything, but I am done. Thank you, Imani, for pulling that together. A lot of similarities to Nesby, as you mentioned. Does anybody know what year Nesby started? Anybody want to drop that in the chat? And 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 uh, Jonathan, if you can check the chat and let me know if you see the right answer in there. No one's okay. All right, we'll learn about that a little later. Okay. Oh, looks like Lauren has it right. Nineteen seventy-five. So yeah. Uh, ship was 1973, it sounded, and Nesby's 1975. So these organizations got going kind of around the same time. Like they were two different cities, two different places, noticing um, a, a common cause and, and need to close the gap in uh, what we now call STEM. So thank you, um, Imani, for doing that research for us. All right. No so I had a wonderful opportunity at work uh, yesterday to hear about an astronaut named Jose Hernandez. He actually has a movie that's out on Amazon Prime called A Million Miles Away. And uh, he talked about how his family, um, his, his, his uh, Mexican roots, um, his family came uh, to Mexico, from Mexico to the United States, and uh, they were migrant workers and uh, moved around and 
he he was born in the U.S. I don't think all of his siblings, I think one sibling was not. But basically, I think it's so amazing how he went from driving tractors to flying in in um, uh, rockets. So uh, this is an amazing movie about him. We had a chance to hear him talk about his journey and how he came from small, um, you know, uh, income, minimal means of uh, education and from his parents, but um, out of their, their hard work and focus, he was able to become an astronaut. He said it did take him like 11 times to try before he actually got in, but um, these are just some of the quotes that he shared, success of a, a recipe by his dad, defining your goals, recognize how far you are from it, get a roadmap, education is the key, have a strong work ethic, and persevere, never give up. Um, so those are some of the things, and uh, this is the liftoff or Discovery 128 mission. And this is actually just a little promo about the movie. And I uh, tried to communicate with him during the meeting. There are about 300 people on the call and probably 100 in the room. So everybody's question did not get answered. But this is what I asked him. What hands-on advice do you suggest for youth interested in aerospace? Um, I didn't get to ask the question directly, but the people who are organizing the event got back in touch with me. And this is what he recommended. Robotics, other STEM type of activities, in general, to open up your minds to what is possible and to provide exposure through experiences. So that is exactly what we are we are already doing. And um, he just basically said, uh, not very specific, but he mentioned robotics several times. So we'll need to put more emphasis on getting you more exposure to robotics and the things that will be needed in the future. So just wanted to share that with you. Um, and I will drop that YouTube link in the chat if you want to see the preview of the movie or find it on Amazon Prime. And he also shared his contact information. I plan to reach out to him on LinkedIn, but these are ways that he can be reached. He also has a foundation called Reaching for the Stars that um, I haven't had a chance to check that out, but I plan to as well to see if there's ways for us to connect. All right, so we already heard a little bit about the ship history, but just a little bit about NSB. If you're new, you may not understand or know how NSB is um, put together. Uh, the NSB pipeline starts with K through 12. That's NSB Junior, that's our chapter. Also, um, college students have chapters. NSB is a student-led organization. So college students actually lead the organization and then there are professional members in professional chapters. We have a professional chapter here called the Research Triangle Professionals. And that is for uh, people who are already advanced in their career or moving into, into their career to help collegiates in our NSBE Junior chapters. And NSBE was founded in 1975, incorporated in 1976 by seven founders six that we call the Chicago Six and their advisor, Dr. Arthur Bunn. This is a kind of a, a dated photo. Three of them, four of them actually are still living. And um, we have had the chance to connect with George Smith. He's been to some of our meetings. He still lives in Chicago. Brian Harris actually just had his 70th birthday. He still lives in Chicago as well as uh, in Ed Coleman. Um, is also in Chicago. Tony Harris is between Chicago and I think California because he runs a company, a construction company. And these two members are, are deceased and so is Dr. Arthur Bunn. So just a little background about that. And um, they started this at Purdue University in 1975. The Nesby symbol, um, actually George Smith designed this. The lightning bolt represents the striking impact being felt by society and industry as a result of, country, of the contributions and achievements by the National Society of Black Engineers. And the torch represents 
NSB members' everlasting burning desire to achieve success as engineers in a competitive society and positively affect the quality of life of all people. So that is what the symbol means. And just a little bit about RTP Nesby Jr. We are a community chapter. We are in a region two. And if you joined um, uh, at the beginning, you heard a, a song playing. It was called the Two Hype Chant, which was actually produced by one of the RTP Nesby members. But there are six regions and region two is outlined in the map in the lower right corner. Um, those are the states of region two. It also covers Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East. And each region has their own chant. And our chant is too hype. And when you go to a conference, if someone sees someone from region two, that's what they say. I happened to be at a hotel in Greensboro and I had a Nisby shirt on and I just heard someone yell out too hype. And I looked around and it was somebody from a from region two. So didn't know the person, but that's just kind of like our, our uh, public call. And we serve Raleigh during Chapel Hill, Chapel Hill and surrounding areas. Um, we also have virtual members. There are a few chapters popping up. The closest one to us is the chapter that's at the North Carolina School of Science and Math, which is limited to only those students and it's only a high school chapter. And I have seen a few other ones. I don't know if they're active in the area, but the last check of what was actually active in the Raleigh Durham Chapel Hill was that this was the only chapter. And we um, started in October, 2019. Uh, during the pandemic, we had anywhere from 15 to 67 members. Uh, usually by the end of the year, we were somewhere around 40 to 45. Not all are active. Um, this is just a little history about when we got started. The dues are a total of $12 if you are in grades three to, through 12. And that's because the national dues are five, and local dues are seven. If you are in grades K through second grade, uh, we only um, collect the local dues of $5 because the national chapter doesn't technically start um, with the K through second. It technically starts at grades uh, third, third grade. And we focus on competition, expo, research, um, tutoring. Aisha is going to go over the programming in uh, a little bit. But as I noted earlier that uh, this is our um, first meeting and we have to induct our new officers. And what I usually do is uh, get someone who is an alum to come back. I won't put Lauren on the spot. She is an alum. So I'll just have her kind of co-induct with me tonight. And uh, what I want to do at this time is have all the officers who are present, if you would come on the screen um, and follow the instructions. If you're not able to and you can just hear, that's okay. And uh, it's going to be pretty easy. Um, what I'm going to do is ask that you come on the screen and then I will read the officer induction oath. Uh, oath is a very serious thing. And what we're going to do is change the verbiage and say that you will do your best versus saying that you will pledge because you'll have the support of all of the research triangle professional members who are on the call and your NSBE junior alums who will come back and support us at times. All right. So I will read this and at the end, if you agree, um, each of you will say your name and say, yes, I agree. And, uh, and that will be it. Okay. I will read the first two bullets. And Lauren, if you're still on, if you will read that third bullet, and then we will have each officer um, acknowledge that they agree. I will do my best to uphold the goals, mission, and objectives of the National Society of Black Engineers. I will do my best to perform my duties to the best of my abilities in the service of Nesby. I will do my best to work in a concerted effort with other executive board members to implement the national directives as NSBE moves towards achieving the goals and objectives of NSBE 2025. And that is actually to have 10,000 black engineers graduate per year by 2025. And Lauren, are you able to read that third bullet? 
Yes, I can. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Sorry, yes. sorry, sorry. Um, I the third bullet, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Yes, That's this okay. one, yeah. I pledge to support the membership and their endeavor endeavors, and most importantly, <laughs> to work to increase the number of culturally responsible Black engineers who excel academically, succeed professionally, and positively impact the community. Thank you, Lauren. And um, and like I said, we'll say I will do my best to support. So at this time, uh, I'm going to ask each of the officers this question. Um, do you agree to what has been read? And if so, say your name. And yes, I agree. So Jonathan, do you agree with what has been read? Yes, I agree. Okay, and just say your name. Yes, my name is, just say Jonathan Winstead. Yes, I agree. Uh, Jonathan Winstead, yes, I agree. All right. And in the order that's on the slide. Imani Eziogu, and yes, I agree. All right, and Critton is next. Critton Vesvesh, and I agree. Ryan is um, not present, so we will induct him at another time. And Aisha. All right, Aisha may not be here yet, so we will we will revisit hers at another time. I don't believe that Daniel is here. And I don't think that Brianna is here. And Sage, I am adding you as an officer assistant just so you can be in training. So Sage, do you um, agree as well? Uh, I agree. Wonderful. So with that, our president will be Jonathan Winstead. Our vice president is Imani Eziogu. Our secretary is Kritin Visvesh. Um, and we will um, continue the induction with the others that are missing there. And our officer assistant is Sage Winstead. And at this time, feel free to congratulate them in the chat and show them some appreciation for their prior service and involvement and congratulate them for what they will do in the future. Okay, so at this time, I do wanna take a few moments to just talk about um, a very important topic, um, Your Life Matters. We actually last year did our, uh, I think it may be two years ago, did our first look at uh, Suicide Prevention Month and September Su Suicide Prevention Month. And it's very important that we take some time to just talk about this and make sure that those on the call, our, our members, our guests, and maybe any, anybody that you may know needs this information. We want to make sure that you can get this to them, make sure they hear it, um, because suicide rates have increased. I am sad to say that at my alma mater, North Carolina State University, last year they had 14 students that committed suicide. And they had another one that committed suicide probably less than a month ago. So we want to make sure that we are doing our part and our best to get the word out, to advocate for um, wellness, for um, information, and also making people understand that there is help if they are in a mental crisis. There is a suicide and crisis lifeline, 988. And you can call this if you are in a crisis or you know of someone that you think should be calling and they're not and get advice and they are available 24 seven. So as you can see, um, our backgrounds and we are wearing t-shirts, you may not be able to see our shirts, but we are wearing shirts, we're wearing pins um, that represent our support of suicide prevention. And if anyone who is on the call wants to show their uh, shirt or pin on camera, feel free to do so at this time as I switch to a video. Awesome. And the colors are purple and teal. And I'll just show my shirt. I don't know if you can see it. 
And basically it says stay. And then there's a lot of different uh, words written in there. It says kind, love, tomorrow needs you. So basically it's a, an expression that can speak to someone even if they don't um, see it. Um, they can read it and hopefully that will encourage people to choose life. And if any of the other officers want to share um, what their shirt says or their pen or their paraphernalia, feel free to do so at this time. Um, I have mine on. You can see the background, um, the suicide prevention background on the side and then the Hispanic, the Hispanic Heritage Month. And I also have my You Matter shirt with my teal and my purple. Thank you, Imani. Any others? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I have my shirt and then I have my uh, background for the uh, suicide prevention. So that's the two things I have. Okay. And any others? All right, so at this time, I am going to show a couple of little quick video clips. And has anybody just kind of talking openly? Have you, uh, any of you, recognize any signs of depression or concerning um, uh, conversation with friends? And if so, you don't have to say um, their name, but a show of hands or something in the chat. And um, if you shared anything to kind of help them out and feel free, you know, to share it. Uh, you can do that at this time or just say, yep, I shared something with them and it helped or no, I didn't, but I plan to, or I don't know what to say, but I wanted to find some help. All right, at this time, I am going to show just this quick little video. Let me see if I can get it to play. Hey, Are you guys hearing it? Hey, Psych2Goers, welcome back to another video. Thank you all so much for being here. With your help and support, we're able to succeed in our mission to make mental health and psychology more accessible to everyone. So thank you. Now, let's continue. Did you know that depression can occur in varying degrees from mild to moderate to severe? In this video, we'll be focusing specifically on some of the signs and symptoms of severe depression. As always, we want to remind you that this is for educational purposes only and not meant to diagnose or to invalidate an individual experience not included on the list. If you do believe that you're suffering from severe depression, we encourage you to seek the help of a mental health professional. With that said, here are six signs of severe depression. Number one, daily stomach pain. Do you wake up most days with a sinking feeling in your stomach? Is it painful and does the pain make it difficult for you to function? Many conditions and illnesses can also cause this, but severe depression might be your culprit. According to Healthline, research has shown that depression has strong links to inflammation of the digestive system. Not only does this mean that severe depression makes you more prone to stomach cramps and nausea, but also to bloating and other digestive problems. If you can relate to this, we encourage you to seek the help of a medical professional to relieve your pain. Number two, your life feels like it's on pause. Do you have a hard time getting things done throughout the day? Not just work, but also things like getting up to brush your teeth or to take a shower. Though some may perceive this as laziness, it might actually be a sign of severe depression. Healthline also explains that fatigue is a common sign of severe depression, and it can feel like no amount of sleep is ever enough for you to get your normal energy back. Your worth is not measured by how much you get done in a day or your productivity level. Even if all you had the energy for was to take out the trash and feed the dog, you're doing what you need at your own pace. Number three, there is a growing apathy towards your goals. Are you someone who usually dreams big? Have those dreams recently seemed less appealing or more out of grasp? Apathy is a symptom of severe depression that is often overlooked because it can manifest as contentment. 
But when a nonchalant attitude becomes an indifference to goals that used to mean a lot to you, it may be something worth paying attention to as it's a sign of severe depression. Number four, mental breakdowns. Do you find yourself overreacting to things that would usually be only mildly annoying? Are you prone to mental breakdowns every now and again? According to the New Dimensions Day Treatment Center, a mental breakdown is a combination of severe depression and anxiety and can manifest in a variety of ways. They might show up as panic attacks, rumination, helplessness, and much more. For a more comprehensive list of what a mental breakdown could look like, please feel free to visit the link in our references. If you find yourself in the middle of a mental breakdown, remember that you aren't alone. Though it may feel insurmountable, know that help is available and that you are fully capable of getting through this. Number five, noticeable behavioral symptoms. Have your friends told you that you don't seem yourself lately? One of the characteristics of severe depression is that many behavioral symptoms are noticeable by others. In fact, the symptoms themselves may be indicative of a milder form of depression, but the way it impacts your life could classify the depression as severe. Some of these symptoms could include fatigue, irritability, anger, substance abuse, reckless behavior, and more. However, like all of these signs, this is not a hard and fast rule. All experiences with depression are equally valid. And this is not to say that severity is solely dependent on the observations of people around you. Though no one may notice, you could still be suffering in silence with severe depression. And we don't wanna take anything away from your experience. We just want to point out that severe depression is more likely to be noticeable than other forms. And number six, hallucinations or delusions. Do you experience out-of-body experiences due to your depression, such as hallucinations or delusions? This is known as depressive psychosis and can, in some cases, result from major depression. Examples of this can be hallucinations, paranoia, or delusions that interfere with your everyday life. If you find yourself experiencing psychosis, know that help is available and that seeking help is encouraged because altered perceptions of reality could impact your well-being in harmful ways. We hope this helped you learn about some of the signs of severe depression. Could you relate to any of the signs in the video? If you can relate, remember that you're not alone. Help is out there. And we encourage you to seek professional help to aid in your recovery. Please like and share this video if it helped you and you think it could help someone else too. The studies and references used are listed in the description below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more Psych2Go videos. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. All right. So just making sure that we're all aware. Um, I do want to share just one more. Like I said, uh, this is a topic since we discussed it last time. Uh, it seems that it's become more prevalent in the community. My ups and downs, just like anybody else. Maybe more than anybody else. I can be hard to figure out. And I like my privacy. I don't want you looking over my shoulder all the time. But you know your kid better than anybody else. And if you think he's acting different than usual. Acting really down, crying all the time for no good reason. Or getting really mad. Not able to sleep or sleeping too much. Shutting her friends out or giving her stuff away. Acting reckless, drinking, using drugs staying out late suddenly not doing stuff he used to love or doing stuff that's just not like him it might be nothing to worry about it might just be high school or it might be something more he might be depressed not just feeling down really depressed it might be that your kid is thinking about killing himself it happens more than you think more than it should and people say i had no idea I thought it was just a phase he was going through. I never thought she'd do it. I wish he'd come to me. I wish he'd said something. I wish I'd said something. When it's too late. So if you think your kid's acting different, if he seems like a different person, say something. Say, what's wrong? How can I help? And ask straight out, are you thinking about killing yourself? It doesn't hurt to ask. In fact, it helps. When people are thinking about killing themselves, they want somebody to ask. They want somebody to care. Maybe you're afraid you'll make it worse if you ask. Like, you'll put the idea in their head. Believe me, it doesn't work that way. 
It doesn't hurt to ask. In fact, the best way to keep a teenager from killing herself is to ask, are you thinking about killing yourself? And what if they say yes? Or maybe. Or sometimes? Well, here's what you don't say. That's crazy. Don't be such a drama queen. You're making too much of this. That boy's not worth killing yourself over. It's not going to solve anything. You're just trying to get attention. You're not going to kill yourself. What you do say is, I'm sorry you're feeling so bad. How can I help? We'll get through this together. Let's keep you safe. A lot of people think about killing themselves, adults and kids. Most of them never try it, but some of them do. So if your kid says, I'd be better off dead. I can't live with this. I'm going to kill myself. Take her seriously. Find someone she can talk to about it. Someone who knows how to help. Sometimes kids want to kill themselves because something happened. A breakup, a failure. But sometimes it goes deeper, and it's not going to go away by itself. Get some help. Talk to your doctor. Or a counselor at school. Or your minister. But don't just let it drop. And make sure that your kid always has someone to turn to. Someone he trusts. Make a list together. Write them. Three, four, five names. Put a suicide hotline number on there, too. Have him keep that list in his wallet so he always knows where to turn. Make sure your home is safe. If you have pills she could use to hurt herself, lock them up. If you have a gun, don't just lock it up. Get it out of the house, the bullets too. And one more thing. If you think your kid might be about to hurt himself, don't leave him alone. Take him to the emergency room. Call 911 if you have to. We all have our ups and downs, but sometimes it's more than that. If you think something's wrong, the only way to find out is to ask. Ask straight out. Are you thinking about killing yourself? Don't wait until you're sure. Trust your gut, because it never hurts to ask. And it can make a big difference. All the difference. In your kid's life. All right. So I know that was a little direct, but I recently um, saw a chat online that was for my neighborhood. There is an app called Nextdoor. And that was someone who had posted something in the chat that they were struggling and they were thinking about giving up. And then a lot of people started responding and offering suggestions and things of that nature. And um um, one person did say something pretty wrong and everybody kind of like jumped on that person, kind of like said, don't, don't listen to that, but it does help to, uh, point people in the right direction, try to, try to get them to contact someone they trust, um, tell them to call 911, tell them to go to call 988, or, um, you, uh, may just tell an adult that you know and trust about something they said that bothered you. So just want to make sure that um, people take it more seriously because, like I said, we have had um, this presentation once, and since then, it seems that a lot more happened, and just want to make sure people take it seriously when they hear someone or see something, um, just saying something and um, communicating with someone about it if you don't want to handle it, don't expect you to, but share that with any of the advisors in RTP Nisby. Um, if it's at school, share that with a teacher or share that with your parents because you may help save someone's life. And uh, like I said, these are shirts that we have worn. We wore them in September, but we can definitely wear them anytime throughout the year if you just want to in an easy way, express a message that could actually help someone who's struggling. All right. So just in final talk, and if there's something that anyone who's listening feels that they want to discuss, feel free to reach out to myself, send me a private message, send me an email, a text, and uh, we definitely can talk. All right, for the sake of time, we'll save the wellness break to the end. And I'm gonna briefly talk about how to support our mission. So if at any time 
you or someone you know would like to donate to RTP Nesbitt Jr., you can do that by giving funds, giving your time, or giving your talent. We also uh, have ways to donate via rtpnsbe.org. We also accept PayPal, debit or credit card. And if you need other payment methods, you can send an email to treasurer at nsberrtp.org. And also donations, whether they are monetary or in-kind, are tax deductible. All right, at this time, Critton is going to provide just a quick update on the progress that we have made since um, August. Critton? So hi, um, I'm Critton. Um, I'm just gonna give you a brief progress report of what we did in the last couple of months and what is yet to come. So in August, we had our NSB experience STEM camp and we completed our back to school STEM camp at John Deere, which uh, ended uh, on August 5th. Um, today is our kickoff meeting and we would like all of you to sign up for the NSB membership for the local views, which is $7 and the national uh, views, which is five. Um, next, we have the Trends Data Science Club, which is personally uh, one of my favorites. Um, it's It was the first camp that I did for NSBE last summer, and it really got me uh, to the position where I am today. It's just a camp, really, if you're interested in data and analytics, and you can really work on any project you would like. And we worked in, with programming languages like C and R and SQL and stuff like that. Uh, then after the Trends Data Camp, we will start ACE tutoring. Uh, more details of that will be provided, but um, it's a tutoring service for all the middle schoolers and high schoolers, and it will start October. And uh, specific details will be sent uh, through email. Right, and just to kind of add, we are going to expand ACE to uh, kindergarten, primary grades as well. And we do actually have a meeting tonight to talk about the, the, the data science club. So um, I have a few people that are going to discuss tonight um, when we're going to have that. And we also have a grant thanks to uh, Mr. Winstead and his job for providing us with a grant so that we can continue the data science camp. Thank you, Kristen. Yep. All right. Then, uh, yeah, go okay. ahead. You can go ahead. And uh, next, we're going to have the tech challenge. It's going to be open ages 14 to 24. It's going to take place on uh, November 12th, 2023, from 3 to 8 p.m. And it's basically for beginners. Um, uh, that includes like teens and young adults that are interested in coding and getting into tech careers. And uh, how you do this is that you can register at the link provided. And the deadline to register is November 3rd. And how you should register is in groups of two to four people. Thank you. That's and this, thank you. This is a new organization that we have not partnered with in the past. They've been around, but excited to be able to um, provide information from STEM media. All right. Aisha, are you on the line? I know Aisha had to work. Okay, she may not be on yet. Um, and Jonathan, I'm gonna ask that you help me with this one because I know you have participated in some of these programs um, and you can just talk a little bit about them. But as Kristen just mentioned, ACE Tutoring, we are, um, that is in partnership with North Carolina a and State University's NSBE chapter in Cortex Robotics. Uh, we need to, to do the registration for that. So when you register for this, meeting, you were asked questions about um, what you may be interested in. They typically meet twice a week, and we'll have to base the days on the signups, and it's pretty much all subjects. Uh, we would like to also launch an intro to coding using code.org and asynchronous learning, and if we have enough, we can also do Make Music Count, which is a program that teaches math by also learning music. And we just talked about trends, which is for middle and high schoolers. And the trimathalon is for um, ninth through 12th grade 
and several of our members participated in our trimathalon last year. Um, also, we want to launch the matriculators, which will be focused on high schoolers and getting them ready for college, um, talking about colleges and the th things that you need to basically be aware of as you get ready to transition to college, gaining more responsibility, um, your mental wellness, um, and uh, making sure that you are getting ready to fill out college applications and collecting the right information and how to request a recommendation from someone, things like that. And several members have participated in Nesby Junior Explorer projects on the call where they explore different topics on their own. So um, those are kind of independent studies and in small groups. And then also, if your time is short and you don't um, feel that you have the bandwidth to commit to anything on a consistent basis, we have some family-oriented STEM activities that happen periodically. Uh, one that I really like is the astronomical and aeronautical adventure. So we call them um, the astros. And basically, uh, if there's something that's happening in the sky, like a shuttle launch or the, the space station or something happening with the planets, we'll um, find a place where we can view it and see it. And some of us have telescopes and astronomical binoculars so that we can see that. We have not had a chance to do astronomy week that's in January every year and it's hosted by uh, one of the local museums. But that's something that I'm hoping that we can do. And we have had um, the um, Rocketry Club at North Carolina State University present to us and they've invited us to be able to come to one of their launches in person. Um, they build um, these big rockets and they go out into the country in these large fields and, and launch them. So those are the kind of activities that you can get involved in. And these are just some quick links on what asynchronous learning looks like. All right. So with that, I'm just going to pause for a little bit and I will let Jonathan, Jonathan, just talk a little bit about some of the programs that you have participated in personally and um, what you like the most about those. And then if there are others who want to do the same, feel free to do it at this time. Hello, uh, my name is Jonathan. Uh, so I did, with Nesby, I've done, uh, a, with Nesby, I've done ACE tutoring. Uh, I did the, uh, the uh, trimathlon and I also did the uh, uh, data, data science club. So with the first one, which was uh, the, ACE, the ACE tutoring, which is the Academic Concentration for Excellence tutoring uh, that was hosted uh, by Dr. Tony. Uh, so basically, I believe it was, um, it starts in, in November, right? It's going to start in October. Okay, it starts in October. So basically from October all the way to around March, March or May. Uh, I had a uh, free tutoring presented by people who are, uh, were, um, what do we call it? College uh, students. Uh, yeah, college students who were uh, helping out. So uh, last year I was working on uh, like chemistry and uh, geometry and it's a uh, hard topic for me. So I needed help in that. And so I got help with homework and I got uh, help with um, studying for tests. Uh, now to the intro for coding. So I did that over the summer. So we went over we went over Python, which is a uh, the common uh, most common form, and then uh, of coding. And then we also went over uh, two other forms of coding. And basically, it was like a, uh, a two to three week camp where we went over strictly coding, uh, how to how to use it, and um, how to um, apply it to your uh, your average life. And then um, also for the uh, Data Science Club. So Data Science Club is also a, a club uh, hosted by Dr. Tony. Uh, where we are learning about uh, different forms of science from biology, uh, physical science, and chemistry, uh, and anatomy. So we're learning about stuff like that. And then the last thing that I myself participated in was the uh, TMOL uh, quiz, uh, I mean, sorry, math quiz ball, which uh, we... Uh, I think me, me and Amani and Daniel, I think the ones on the call, uh, we uh, participated in that. And then uh, for our grade level, we got first place in that. 
All right. And you yeah. also you also did the NIST Virginia Explorer projects too. You did the the Voyagers, you, Imani, and Daniel participated in the earthquake project. Hello. Okay. Yeah. So we um so me, Imani, and Daniel, and then he's not on the car right now. But then, uh so us so us four we did um a project on uh it's called earthquakes. And so we all had uh we all had four separate parts. So I so I had to uh test out how an earthquake works and I used a uh it was like a shaker. It was like a shaker machine and I built a structure built out of um marshmallows and toothpicks to simulate like uh different three different buildings and then I tested it out with a time uh and then um I basically uh showed the results of it and with the other ones uh I also talked about the tectonic plates in the ring of fire uh Amani she talked you want to go over what you talked about Amani yeah sure I can cover it when you're done Okay, so the rest of what I did was the Ring of Fire, and then uh, uh, we, we as a group, we presented over, like, different areas. So the last time we presented it was in uh, Maryland, so that's what I have. All right, thank you. Any money? Um, yes, so I participated in a lot of the programs and activities that we had to offer, um, including ACE tutoring. I remember... Um, I was struggling particularly in biology my freshman year of high school, and um, I had a situation where I had a long-term sub in my class, and um, we weren't learning much, and then my actual teacher came back for the end of the semester, and we had like a big test, um, and we had midterms coming up that I wasn't really properly prepared for, um, and I feel like I, need, I needed extra help, so I had um, a college student from a t actually walk me through basically my whole um, all the units that I had to, that had to be covered, and I passed my um, midterm with an A um, in biology. So the ACE tutoring program was really beneficial for me. Um, I also participated in the trans data science camp um, over one summer, where we got to work in groups on different topics. Um, my group specifically focused on like the medical field. We um, created like the interface and um, idea behind an app called Misdiagnosis in Color, which basically um, addressed um, medical professionals, maybe pushing down and ignoring the um, concerns of patients of color or just either, or maybe flat out misdiagnosing them or just not addressing the issue properly, um, which is a Are you still there, Imani? All right. Are you all able to hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. You might have lost your money. Okay. Maybe she'll be able to join back in. All right. We'll wrap that one up. Is anybody else on? Um, that wants to talk about the activities they participated in. Okay. All right. So as we wrap up, I did want to announce that uh, there is an opportunity to be a virtual guest for an upcoming return mission. These are free. All you have to do is go out and register at nasa.gov. I actually have my ticket and uh, this particular return mission uh, is for a craft that launched in 2016 from Cape Canaveral and it collected samples of asteroids on October the 20th and it will be returning to earth on September the 24th. So um, I will be able to virtually watch that return. So these are just free activities on nasa.gov or of any, any of their um, craft and um, missions that they have going on. You're able to go there and be a virtual attendee and just register through Eventbrite. So Amani uh, just sent a text. Okay. Um, she says her audio cut out, but uh, she's participated in ACE, Trends, Matriculators, Project Team, and Team All. Awesome. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Thank you for that share. And as we wrap up, we're going to talk about how to join. So as we noted earlier, all members grades 3 to 12, uh, you would have to pay the national and local and the K through second grade, only local dues. Uh, we'll talk in a moment about how you do that, but here's some of the benefits. You have an account that you can log into. There's scholarships that you can actually start applying to in ninth grade. And if you have a 3.0 or higher, you consider an APEX student. And that means you get discounts for conferences and things of that nature. And we have to verify your, your GPA. So I have to go in and do that. And if you have any questions about that, you can email Daniel at Membership Junior at nsberTP.org. So real quick, um, I'm going to ask Critton to assist with this because he and I walked through it yesterday, but you will go to nsb.org. And if you are renewing, you still click the same join, renew in the upper right corner. So whether you're joining or renewing, you click that. And then a screen like this is going to come up. If you are renewing, your username is your email address and enter your password. If you don't remember it, enter what you think it is. And if it's not correct, you can just click forget, forgot your password and reset it. If you are joining for the first time, you can create a login at that same screen. And use an email address that is going to be unique to you. So if uh, parents... You're, you have multiple children who will be in Nesbitt Junior. You can create uh, unique email addresses. You can only have one email address per uh, child. And um, I would suggest creating a Gmail address that you check because it will stay with them. Um, this account will stay with them for as long as they are members, even on into adulthood, and they will be assigned a Nesbitt ID based on the email address. And you can update that email address at any time. And also just to note, some school addresses do not work well with receiving communications because of firewalls. Um, what has worked best is a Gmail address. All right, and Kritten, do you wanna just share what you did once you got inside of the portal to renew? Yeah, basically um, it's like kind of like a tedious process, but if you already like if you're renewing, you should have all the blanks, like your date of birth, like all the things I asked, it should already be, be filled out. Um, just uh, you have to click the NSB junior member, the top box and click the select button. And that will bring you to a page uh, of the paying page where you just put in your credit card information and you should be ready to go. Right. And on this screen, um, we want to note that if you check this box, you're going to get an auto renew. So I would advise to not check it unless you just want to be automatically renewed. But um, as he mentioned, select Nesbitt Junior membership here. It's $5. Um, our chapter's official name is Research Triangle Proteges, Nesbitt Junior. And we're located in North Carolina. And here's the screen that Kritten was mentioning. If you are renewing, this should be pretty much filled in. Um, if you are a first time registrant, you have to fill in all of the red asterisks. Those are required fields. There'll be some questions here that don't really apply. So educational institution, you can put other there that will help bypass that, put your grade, it is good to enter a GPA. It's not required, but if you're in high school, it's good to enter your GPA so that you can be made aware of scholarships and um, be able to apply. And then you can put unknown for anticipated major and second major. And then um, down here, select the appropriate information. If you are in high school, and just leave it blank if not, then you hit next. You will receive an electronic communications. Um, you can check the ones that you want to receive. And on this one, Critton selected chapter, scholarships, conferences and conventions in PCI, which stands for pre-college initiative. And then 
um, he got a screen that says, hey, um, enter your credit card information. So he was able to get that entered. Um, if you are a new member, your NSBI ID used to appear on the receipt. Um, I'm thinking that you're going to get an email or something that's going to let you know what your NSBI ID is. If you don't know what your NSBI ID is, once you have paid, you can go into the profile and you'll see it there. All right, so that's how you do the national dues. Once you have done the national dues, you can screenshot this or um, grab this QR code with your cell phone. It will take you to our Eventbrite page, which is how we collect our dues for the local chapter. And they are $7. There will be some duplicate information, but it's pretty quick. It doesn't take as long as the national one, but you will need your NSBE ID to enter that in your local dues um, application. So you do both of those and that's how you join. And just to wrap up, is there anyone on the call who has a STEM experience from the summer that they want to share? Go ahead, Imani. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, so I dialed in. So if it sounds a little bit different, that's why. Um, this summer I spent three weeks um, at the University of Delaware for a residential program called EDGE, basically offering rising juniors and seniors in high school the opportunity to live on campus as a high school, as a college student mm -hmm. and be responsible, be responsible for themselves, get themselves to class, um, use different modes of transportation. Um, and we were able to register for either one or two classes mm -hmm. Um, for the three weeks, and I chose Introduction to Engineering Product Design, because um, that's one of the classes that aligned most with um, what I want to major in in college, and it seemed the most interesting to me. Um, this opportunity also offered three college credits um, by the end of the three weeks, as long as you pass the class. Um, so this class was more based on like civil and structural engineering, kind of. Um, while I'm focused more on like environmental engineering, but I found it really, really fun. The whole um, premise of the course was to um, act as if you were a, we were a company that manufactures toys and there was a company sourcing us out that wanted to create a toy trebuchet or like a toy um, catapult for kids. We had to learn how to use the engineering product design um, process to be able to use heuristics and come up with sketches and ideas and think outside of the box and then be able to narrow them down, um, be able to work with uh, randomized um, members in the class um, and form a team. We um, became certified on um, CAD computer aided design on Onshape um, and we became 3D printer and laser cutting um, certified. And we had to take our ideas and our um, 2D sketches that we built on our software and transform those into real life um, objects using those same dimensions that we created. Um, so my group was able to create a trebuchet um, out of 3D printed parts that had to launch as, at least 20 feet and ours was able to launch around 34 feet. Um, we also had to present in front of our class um, and in front of my professor who was, he is um, an engineer and he is a professor at the University of Delaware. So overall, the experience was really, really fun and educational um, and kind of exposed me to more STEM concepts and gave me like a preview of what it would be like to take um, a realistic engineering course in college. Hey, Dr. Tony, are you here?
I'm still here. I'm sorry about that. Tommy, are you able to share your experience? I saw a hand raise. Are you guys able to hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. Maybe Tommy is not able to come off a of mute or hear. And maybe some technical difficulties. Oh, yeah, Tommy, Tommy's not able to. Mute. Okay, Tommy, sorry about that. Why don't you just drop it in the chat what you did and uh, we can read it for you as we get ready to wrap up. Um, as we get ready to wrap up, are there any questions from any parents? And I'll uh, let Tommy put um, their experience in the chat. Parents, do you have any questions on anything that was shared tonight? Okay, so Tommy wanted to say my daughter participated in FEMS. Okay, wonderful. That sounds like that might be interesting. I'm not familiar with that one. Okay, and wanted to share something about it. Okay. Is it, is it Duke University? Awesome. Wonderful. So what I'm going to do actually is put my number in the chat, and perhaps that's something that we can discuss offline. And would love to hear all about it because it may be something that we can share um, at another time with a broader group. Oh, and accepting applications now. Do you know when? Um, is there a cost for this? Is it is it free or is there a cost? And it's absolutely free. Okay, if you have the application and you want to email it to me. That would be great. And I can share it with everyone um, after the meeting. Okay. I'm having a little difficulty myself trying to put something in the chat. All right, here we go. Here is my email. And then also we have a Google voice number just for NSB information and calls. And here's also my personal cell. We're going to end now. Um, if you want to stay connected. And uh, hey, Asha, good to hear you, see you. Um, thanks for coming back. And Asha, volunteer for trends. I know we have a number of engineers um, and STEM professionals in the chat. Um, if any of you want to stick around, you can definitely do that. And, and maybe a few people want to connect. Uh, just want to make sure everybody does know that we do have, I do have a site on Facebook called United Shades of STEM. If you are on Facebook, you don't, you don't have to be on Facebook to access it. Um, you can just Google this and it will come up. If you're on Facebook and you want to post, I have to approve that. But this is where you can find about all things STEM. Like what we post things that are happening locally, things that are happening virtually in other parts of the United States. And it's a great one-stop place to just find out about some great activity. So things like FEM at Duke, that's something that I would want to post on United Shades System. Wonderful. And if you're on and you have volunteered in the past to support our activities, thank you for that. Um, thank you for coming. And uh, I am going to be having a meeting here shortly to talk about the, the data camp. So a few people are going to be jumping on the call in a moment to uh to talk further about that so thank you for coming imani bradshaw thank you share for inviting imani and thank you uh a broner thanks trey for inviting a broner and if any of you have youth that are interested in joining our chapter virtually i don't know where you're located you can um reach out to me via the email address or the phone number provided and we can help you get signed up All right. Well, that is all for tonight. Thank you for coming. And at this time, we are going to end. And if there's anybody that wants to stick around for a few minutes for any questions, feel free to do so. Have a wonderful evening.